I have a selection of little blue bottles in the project and they were made with a combination of two beads. Now I bought a package of that had these blue beads. There were seven in the package and I'm going to show you how I made one. There are different um, shapes and then I also bought a strand of uh, kind of gold brassy colored beads and the nice thing about this strand was that it had all sorts of different kinds of beads in it. So I think you can see here that I have lots of different kinds of toppers on the tops of the bottles. And the way I made these was I found some beads that I liked and I got a toothpick and just used some glossy accents on the toothpick and I put enough in here so I can capture the big bead as well and then just put the, the beads on. Some of these beads are, uh, the holes are big enough to fit down and then once the glossy accents or diamond glaze is set up, I just have some heavy duty uh, trimmers here and I can come in here and cut the um, ends of the toothpick off. Kind of hold on to them so they don't fly around. And then if this end is a rough you can just take a piece of sandpaper. I have an emery board here. I'll just kind of go back and forth on the bottom and that'll get that all nice and flat. And that completes the little bottle. The next object we're going to look at is this framed picture of a bird. It consists of three parts. The first is an image that I downloaded on my computer and printed out on my printer. It was a copyright free image and the image itself is 5 eighths of an inch wide by an inch tall. And then I allowed an extra eighth of an inch all the way around so that it would be the same size as my frame. And so the frame has an eighth inch border. It's made out of medium weight chipboard just from little scraps. And I cut the opening to the size of my image, 5 eighths by 1, and then added an eighth of an inch on all four sides. Now before I cut it out, I put some uh, paper on it so that I could have a nice uh, colored edge. And you could use cardstock or pattern paper, whatever you like. And then I inked the edges so it would look nice and finished. And the third thing we have here is just a little piece of plastic uh, cut the same size as the frame just so that it will look like an actual picture. So I've prepped the back of the frame with some score tape, just an eighth inch wide score tape. And then on there, I'm going to put my little piece of plastic next. Which I've also prepped with some 8th inch score tape. And then we can just center, make sure if there's any kind of stuff on your plastic to get that off before you put it down. And we'll just put that down on top of our bird and give it a burnish. And then if anything hangs over at all, just take your scissors and trim it. And then also if you see any white edges or colored edges, Make sure you give them um, a, a hit with your marker. So that is 
the two little framed pictures of the birds. Next I have some plates. I have two different types of plates. These larger plates were cut from the paper line. I just used an inch and a quarter punch and cut them out. And then I wanted to make them just a little bit bigger. Let me put this on the green so that you can see. So I drew a circle that was an inch and three eighths and then just attach them down and I put some uh, blue marker around each one and that's basically it for those two plates Now this plate was made from two circles of uh, cardstock, a one inch blue circle and a three quarter inch white circle. And I just put them together with some score tape and then ran some glossy accents all over the top. I think you can see, catch it in the light, the shiny there, just so it makes it look like a shiny plate. And then you might notice that this one is not sitting flat and that's because I've already prepped it to go onto the cabinet and what I'm using to hold things upright, and you can see this will stand upright, is a little uh, square, uh, they're alphabet beads, any kind of bead would work. I really like these square ones because they sit squarely but you can use any kind of spare bead. That just gives you an extra gluing surface to um, put the objects in with. So that's the second plate. I have a variety of books in the cabinet and they are two sizes. The larger one is one inch wide by an inch and a quarter tall and I have more of these smaller ones that are three quarters of an inch wide by one inch tall and you can see that hopefully you can see in the camera here that the edges of the paper have some lines on them so they look more like books the books are also two different thicknesses. I think you can see that here. Oops, Let's see if I can put that. The, the larger one has three thicknesses of medium weight chipboard and the smaller ones just have two. You could make them uh, however you'd like. So I'm going to show you how a book goes together by making another one of the larger books. And so I start out with three identically sized pieces of chipboard and as I said these are an inch by an inch and a quarter and I'm just using some white glue to glue them up and make sure I get all those edges as nice as possible. So now that we have our little book block made, I'm going to add the lines on the edges. And I just printed this out on my computer. Uh, the lines are maybe a sixteenth of an inch apart, maybe a little bit closer. Um, I just uh, did it in Excel and, and put them fairly close. And now I just have cut a uh, three-quarter inch wide strip of that paper and I've prepped it with uh, one quarter inch score tape on either side and I should say that this is just plain computer paper um, it's hard to wrap these tiny edges and that thinner paper will, will work better so to prep the book block 
I'm going to use some 1 8 inch tape. Just start partially down one of the long edges. Wrap it around the top, the other long edge, and just continue around until I get back here to the beginning. And now I'll take that tape backing off. And then I want to, I'm going to start it at one of these short ends that we had. And I want to center it on this strip of paper. And just kind of keep my eye on it and just run it right along the center. Got a little bit of tension on the paper. And then when I get back to this original end, I'll just cut that out off to the length I need and get that stuck down. And I'll give that a burnish. Now I have found, and it may just be because it's very humid here today, the, we've had a lot of storms, but that I have better luck not removing the backing first and just making all of my little notch cuts and then removing the tape backing. So I'm just coming in at a 45 degree angle from both sides on each one of these corners. I'm just letting my tip of my scissors kind of bump up against the um, chipboard block and that kind of gives me the right length of cut here. And then I can remove all these little score tape backings. And now that I have all my little score tape backings removed, I can just press these in. I usually like to do opposite sides. And then I'll just repeat that process for the other side. Now that I have both sides complete, I'll just give them a, a burnish. And then I think it's a little stark, so I'm just taking some weathered wood distress ink, just kind of hitting this a little bit, obviously optional. So now we're ready to put paper on the outside. I've cut a piece of paper that is just slightly bigger than an inch and a quarter so that the um, it it will wrap and we won't see any of the edges of the the book block here and then I want to this is the paper I've chosen for this book and I'm just going to take and ink these edges here a little bit we may end up cutting this short edges off, but I like to start with an ink. Now, what I want to do is center this on the spine. And so, I'm going to get my backing started here. And then just take this, the spine is the part here that um, has the break in the pages. And so I'm just kind of looking at, uh, at the ends here and making sure I get it centered. And 
That looks pretty, pretty good. And then I'll just wrap one side first. And then I found it best to use the scissors to cut this off because a craft knife, you're in danger of cutting that um, paper that we put on here before. So I just do one side and then wrap the second side. Now obviously if uh, depending on how you're going to display the book, this looks nice on the spine here, and that's all in my in my cabinet. That's all you're going to see of this book is the spine. This isn't very centered here, so you might um, think think about that a little bit. You can see when I did this little book, this one I'm going to see the top, and so I made sure that my front looked. Uh, as nice as I wanted it to. And then just the last thing here is to um, go back and oops, ink these edges that we cut off. And now we have a little book. Next we have the tiny little bookends that I made to hold up the books in the cabinet. And the bookend consists of two parts. There's a little cube base and then on top I used one of the Tim Holtz hitch fasteners as a decorative topper to it. So let's see how this was made. To make the cube I started with one of the little alphabet beads they are, the ones that I have are a quarter inch in um, any, all dimensions. Now, it's not necessary to have one. It's just helpful because this is so tiny that if you have something to put inside when you're building it, it just makes it a little bit less fiddly. So then I cut a strip of 3 8 inch wide chipboard. All of these pieces are 3 8 inch tall. And then I have two pieces that are 3 8 by 3 8 on this side. And then on the shorter sides, I have two pieces that are 1 quarter inch wide and still 3 8 inch tall. So that's because my chipboard is approximately a 16th of an inch thick. And then I just use some glossy accents to put this together and make this tiny little cube. Now the next step is to cover that cube and before I do I'm just going to take, uh, I'm making this blue so I have here a chip sapphire um, marker and I'm just going to go around the edges just in case up here mostly on the, this top, kind of the top edge and the top, and the top of the side. That's the part that, that will basically show and you can also come around the on the sides, on the bottom a little, if you want. So once you have that ink on, then I've cut a little piece of decorative paper that is 3 8 of an inch wide and I'm going to wrap the little square with it. I'm just going to start midway on one of the sides and then wrap around until I get back to the beginning and I'll cut that off. Now I had already um, hit the edges of this little slip of paper with some blue ink so it's pretty much ready to go. So now we just need to put a piece on our top and I'll just use that same piece of paper and cut a little 
3 8 inch square. Now this one I can see I haven't inked on this end so I'll just make sure that all of my edges here are inked. Then I'll take off the score tape backing. And get that centered. So now we have the cube part. And then for the decorative top, I took, as I said, a Tim Holtz hitch fastener. I did paint it gold just because I'm using other gold things in this project. And I'm just going to use some glossy accents and attach that right on the top. And I thought it looked a little bit plain, so I decided to add some gold uh, stripes around the edges. And I made the gold striping just by taking, hopefully this won't be too big on the camera, this is a piece of white cardstock and it's probably you know, 7 or 8 inches long. And I've just uh, painted it with some uh, gold metallic paint and then I put a piece of uh, score tape on the back and cut some strips off that are a sixteenth of an inch wide and I hit the edges of that white cardstock with a wild honey marker and in fact if you don't have gold paint this wild honey is you can see it just practically matches exactly. So I've got that 16th inch strip here and then I'm going to have just a little bit of a reveal of blue on the bottom and I'm going to start wrapping it on the same side where I had my seam from my blue paper. So I'm just putting it down and wrapping it around and when I get back here to the beginning I can take my craft knife and if it's good and sharp you won't have any problem cutting that and then I put a second strip along the top. Again, again starting on this side where the seam is and having a little bit of a, a blue reveal on the top edge. And then cutting that off with the craft knife. The nice thing about this being in the cabinet is there's definitely one side that won't show. So if your back isn't beautiful, it won't matter. So there is our bookend. I also purchased a couple little things to go in the cabinet and just change them up a little bit. This tree was a pendant. I used some clippers and cut off the um, ring at the top. And then I just took a little alcohol ink on it because the color wasn't exactly what I wanted. And then I put uh, a blue circle of cardstock behind there. And then you can see I've got one of the little beads on here so that it can, that'll give us a gluing surface so it can stand up. And the second thing I have here is 
Oh, I found it in the uh, jewelry section on sale, and it I it had two holes here, so I just put some eyelets in. Then I thought it needed some backing, so I just cut a piece of blue cardstock to kind of mimic the shape, and it is a curved piece here. Um, but I added a couple of the little alphabet beads here at the back just to help it hold up, stand up as well.